Thank you. Good morning. Good morning. Welcome to worship this morning. We're glad you could be with us. Thank you to our, it seems a, bit, a little bit of a small group, but always powerful and, and welcome. So glad you could share with us this morning. I'm glad that you could worship with us. I, don't, I didn't perceive a lot of guests coming in this morning, but just the usual reminders, the screens will lead you through our worship service. When it comes time for communion, please feel invited. All baptized bishops are welcome at the Lord's table at St. John's Church. I don't know that there are other announcements, so I'll invite you to stand as you're able, and we'll we begin with our gathering song, the Cry of My Heart. to be the Holy Trinity, the one who fashions us, who heals us, the one who reforms us again and again. Amen. <laughs> Let us confess our sin, calling for God's transforming power. Source of all life, we, we confess, confess that, that we have, have not allowed, allowed your, your grace to set, set us free. free. We, we fear that, that we are not good enough. enough. We hear your word of love freely given to us, yet we expect others to earn it. We turn the church inward rather than moving it outward. Forgive us, stir us, reform us to be a church powered by love, willing to speak for what is right, act for what is just, and seek the healing of your whole creation. Amen. God hears our cry and sends the Spirit to change us and to empower our lives in the world. Our sins are forgiven. God's love is unconditional, and we are raised up to be, raised up as God's people, will always be made new. In the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And all of with you.
The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Sovereign God, raise your throne in our hearts. Created by you, let us live in your image. Created for you, let us act for your glory. Redeemed by you, let us give you what is yours. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Please be seated for our musical office.
Stunned with silence. I know. I love that. <laughs> Children's message. Children, children, I see Raylan, I see Helena. <laughs> now that might be too scary. Oh, all right. So I'm anticipating finding a 1040 form in this in the bucket. Right? With all supporting documents and uh, 1040 form. <laughs> <laughs> it's about taxes documents. today. We're going to, no, it's not about taxes. Come on up, have a seat. Have a seat, up there, up there, up there. There you go. Good morning. How are you this morning? Good? I heard Raylan say good. Although you're confident, maybe you're not good, huh? You're doing, you're doing okay? Yeah. <laughs> what you got in the bucket to share with us today? reading yep ah point very good so in the Matthew story some people come to Jesus and they're trying to trick him into saying something they don't want him to say or something something he doesn't want to say they're trying to trick him into that and they say well should we pay our taxes to the emperor because the emperor was a bad guy in this case or not and Jesus says well show me a coin and they bring out a coin, and they say, well, whose face is on there? Now, this is Washington, George Washington. You know about George Washington from school? So that's George Washington's face. Uh, but on the coin that Jesus was looking at, it, it was the Roman emperor, the big boss. He was a bad guy. Jesus said, well, you know, if that's got uh, the Roman emperor's face on him, you better give him his stuff back. Uh, but you better make sure you give to God what's God's as well. Well, guess who belongs to God? You belong to God. You belong to God. And they belong to God. We all belong to God. We are, yes, me too. Thank you. You're right. You're right. <laughs> We're all precious and loved by God. That's really what Jesus is trying to remind us of. It really isn't about taxes. So I'm glad Mom and Dad didn't put a 1040 tax form in there. It isn't really about that. It's about God. God desiring us, God claiming us, that we are God's forever and ever and ever. That's pretty cool, right? So, this doesn't have your face on it, but I'll give it back to you anyway, okay? <laughs> All right. What else? Yesterday was your cousin's birthday. Did you get to say happy birthday? Oh, they be, oh, well, that's all right. She'll grow up and then you can tell her happy birthday. Very good. One more. They were nice out of town? Yeah. Oh. That is, that is, there's a lot of nice people in the world, isn't there? That's good to remember. That's very helpful. Wow, very good. All right, can Raylan take the bucket for next week? Oh, <laughs> I was kind of asking Kelly. <laughs> Shout out a yes or a no. Okay, I think I heard a yes. <laughs> well, Helena says yes, so. All right. Oh, I got to put the readings in for next week. Uh, let's see. I'll put those in there. Next week is Reformation Sunday. And I'll say it now because I'll forget later. We're going to decorate the church by wearing red. So you probably got some Bucky Badger clothes or something. You do. Well, there you go. Next week. All right. Thank you for coming up.
In Isaiah, the prophet announces that Cyrus, the Persian emperor, is the one the Lord has anointed to end Israel's exile. The Lord makes this choice so that the whole world will recognize this Lord as the only God. Persia had a God of light and a God of darkness. The Lord claims sovereignty over both light and darkness. Our second reading is from the beginning of 1 Thessalonians. Most likely this letter is the first written by Paul. Paul is giving pastoral encouragement and reassurance to a new Christian community living in an antagonistic pagan environment. Their commitment of faith, love, and hope make them a model for other new Christian communities. Hear the, word. the first reading is from Isaiah. Thus says the Lord to his anointed Cyrus, whose right hand I have grasped, to subdue nations before him and strip kings of their robes, to open doors before him, and the gates shall not be closed. I will go before you and level the mountains. I will break in pieces the doors of bronze and cut through the bars of iron. I will give you the treasures of darkness and riches hidden in secret places, so that you may know that it is I, the Lord, the God of Israel, who calls you by name. For the sake of my servant Jacob and Israel, my chosen, I call you by your name. I surname you, though you do not know me. I am the Lord, and there is no other. Besides me, there is no God. I arm you, though you do not know me, so that they may know from the rising of the sun and from the west that there is no one besides me. I am the Lord, and there is no other. I form the light and create darkness. I make wheel and create woe. I, the Lord, do all these things. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. We read responsibly Psalm 96. Sing to the Lord a new song. Sing to the Lord, all the whole earth. Sing, Sing to the Lord and bless his name. Proclaim the good news of his salvation from day to day. Declare his glory among the nations and his wonders among all peoples. For great is the Lord and greatly to be praised. He is born to be feared than all gods. As for all the gods of the nations, they are but idols. But it is the Lord who made the heavens. Oh, the majesty and the magnificence of his presence. Oh, the power and the splendor of his sanctuary. Ascribe to the Lord, you families of the peoples. Ascribe to the Lord honor and power. Ascribe to the Lord the honor due his name. Bring offerings to come into his court. Worship the Lord in the beauty of holiness. Let the whole earth tremble before him. Tell it out among the nations. The Lord is king. He has made the world so firm that it cannot be moved. He will judge the peoples with equity. Let the heavens rejoice and the earth be glad. Let the sea thunder and all that is in it. Let the fields be joyful and all that is therein. Then shall all the trees of the wood shout for joy before the Lord. When he comes to judge the earth, he will judge the world with righteousness and the peoples with his truth. Ascribe to the Lord, your families of the peoples. Ascribe to the Lord, honor and power. The second reading is from 1 Thessalonians. Paul, Silvanus, and Timothy, to the church of Thessalonians and God the Father and the Lord Jesus Christ, grace to you and peace. We always give thanks to God for all of you and mention you in our prayers, constantly remembering before our God and Father your work of faith and labor of love and steadfastness of hope in our Lord Jesus Christ. For we know, brothers and sisters beloved by God, that he has chosen you because our message of the gospel came to you and not in word only, but also in power and in the Holy Spirit and with full conviction, just as you know what kind of persons we proved to be among you for your sake. And you became imitators of us and, the Lord, and of the Lord. For in spite of persecution, you received the word with joy, inspired by the Holy Spirit, so that you became an example to all the believers in Macedonia and in Acacia. For the world of place, your faith in God, has become known, so that we have no need to speak about it. For the people of those regions report about us what kind of welcome we had among you, and how you turned to God from idols 
to serve a living and true God, and to wait for his Son from heaven, whom he raised from the dead, Jesus, who rescues us from the wrath that is coming. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to you, Lord. Then the Pharisees went and plotted to entrap Jesus in what he said. So they sent their disciples to him, along with the Herodians, saying, Teacher, we know that you are sincere and teach the way of God in accordance with truth and show deference to no one, for you do not regard people with partiality. Tell us then, what do you think? Is it lawful to pay taxes to the emperor or not? But Jesus, aware of their malice, said, Why are you putting me to the test, you hypocrites? Show me the coin used for the tax. And they brought him a denarius. Then he said to them, Whose head is this and whose title? They answered, The emperor's. Then he said to them, Give therefore to the emperor the things that are the emperor's, and to God the things that are God's. When they heard this, they were amazed, and they left him and went away. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Lord Christ. Please be seated. Grace, mercy, and peace to you from God our Father and our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. As I suggested in the children's message, it isn't really a story about taxes. Um, the taxes are just a, a ploy on the part of the Pharisees and the Herodians to, to put Jesus in a bad light, either with the Roman authorities or with the people who were so opposed to the, to the Roman uh, taxes and occupying military force in their country. It's really about who owns what and um, what difference that makes. So I've been kind of focusing in my thoughts on the coin, the coin that Jesus invites the, the Pharisees to produce, um, upon which is the head of the emperor. I, I dug around in my drawer this morning to find a, a silver dollar, an Ike, and just in case the children didn't bring a, a coin. I kind of anticipated a coin, but um, on the screen are a couple of examples of coins. And so I don't know if there are amongst you, I had to look this word up, new, numismatic, numismatic coin collectors. If there are coin collectors or people who study currency and things like that amongst us, you'll know lots more about this than me. But in my quick little research uh, about coins, uh, I'll draw your attention to the one on the top left. It's an 1804 U.S. silver dollar. It's sold in auction in the United States in 2008 for $3,273,000. So I don't know how long I'm going to have to keep this Ike before it's good for $3 million, but it blew my mind. Who pays $3 million for a $1 coin? Mind-boggling. In the lower right-hand corner, <coughs> I'm going to say this wrong, but it's a coin, a 1994 coin from Uzbekistan. I think it's Tian. Um, 2,000 Tian is equal to one cent. So you can imagine going to the candy store to get your 10-cent candy with a bag full of Tian, right? So here are two extremes of, of values of coins. Now, as we think about taxes, as we think about coins, as we think about currency, I'm sure you might, be, you might desire to say with me, as soon as Ben Franklin comes around, I'll be sure to give him back all his money. As soon as any of those dead presidents come around, I'll be sure, because I can see who they belong to. I'll be sure that they get what they need. But the story is really about what God owns and what is God's. 
because I think Jesus intended for the Pharisees to put, be put in a bind as well. Right? When he says, give to the emperor the things that are the emperor's and to God the things that are God's, Jesus doesn't care whose face is on the coin. For Jesus knows that all is God's. The emperor, the emperor's coins, the metal that the coins are made of, the dirt that the metal was dug out of, you and I and everything are God's. And more than that, we have been specially claimed and specially marked. Jesus says, whose head is this? Whose image is this? That's what the Greek says. And whose title, whose name is on it? You are reminded now, as we gather around the font of the pulpit, that you have been given the name of God, the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit in baptism. You have been marked with the cross of Christ forever. You are God's. And that is the gospel. That you are God's, regardless of what you do, regardless of the value that you imagine you have. You are God's. Now, I'm told that this pian in the lower right-hand corner is relatively rare in Uzbekistan because it can't buy anything. They get dropped and lost, and no one goes to the trouble of gathering them back up. But I bet if you were a numismatic, a collector of coins, you might be interested in collecting such a thing. I'm reminded of another of Jesus' parables about the kingdom in Matthew's Gospel. Actually, two of them. The first one makes a lot of sense to me. Jesus says, the kingdom of heaven is like treasure hidden in a field but someone found, which someone found and hid again. Then in his joy, he goes and buy, sells all he has and buys that field. Why? Because the field is of greater value than the price that he would pay for the land because there's a treasure on it. Makes good sense. But then immediately after that, we're told in Matthew's Gospel, Jesus said, the kingdom of heaven is like a merchant in search of fine pearls. On finding one pearl of great value, he went and sold all that he had and bought it. But why would we imagine that the value of the pearl would be greater than the price paid for it? And we're reminded that the kingdom of God is about God selling all to have what God desires. You and I, on the cross, Christ goes to death so that we might have life with God. On the cross, Jesus sells all that we might be bought back from sin, death, and the devil. And maybe it is, as we can comprehend that, whether we think that we are the silver dollar, or the tian, or the penny, or the ike, living out of the realization of God's great, unending love for you, we might come to grow in value. Not in God's eyes. For our value there is found in Christ. But we might be able to respond. So I'll hang on to my silver dollar in hopes that one day it's worth three million. Probably not soon. That will hold fast to the promises of God and Jesus Christ so that I might continue to grow in the likeness of the one who is my Lord and Savior. Your Lord and Savior. Jesus Christ. Amen.
God has made us God's people through our baptism into Christ. Living together in trust and hope, we confess our faith. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life of the last. Amen. Open to the gifts of the Holy Spirit, we pray for the church, the world, and all of God's creation. Trusting in God, we pray for the church. Fill all worshipers with your Holy Spirit. Grant them generous hearts to share God's splendor revealed to them in Jesus Christ. Bless us in our baptism. Remind us of the mark you have made upon us forever. And hear our prayers of thanksgiving for the anniversary this week of the baptism of Anthony Agader, Cole Duncan, Keanu Fry, Ashley Hopkins, Mark Johnson, Tammy Huth, Daniel jo Jones, James Levine, Elaine Parker, Riley Fannis, Alexandria Rail, Elizabeth Rail, Eric Zacek, Craig Austin, Bradley Detman, Andrew Doyle, Sarah Duckworth, Jacob Sutherland, Don Donnell Van Lu, Vincent Anosenti, Sarah Gleason, Daniel Hergert, Mary Cleveland, Carmen Kilgora, Mary Ellen Martin, Catherine Bohr, Lindsay Peterson Johnson, Michael Paper, and Emily Wright. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for creation, for the power of sun, wind, and water, for the riches buried in rock and soil, for the magnificence of life in forms too many to number. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for the nations, for leaders of governments, for fair commerce between nations, for treasurers, boards of directors, and all who justly distribute monetary resources. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for the poor and outcast, for those who cannot afford food, medicine, clothing, and shelter, for the communities and agencies who serve the needy and advocate on their behalf. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Trusting in God's healing power, we pray for this congregation, for the unemployed and overworked, for all who are burdened by debt, for the sick and those in particular need. We pray especially for Paul, Leroy, Judy, Davis, Beverly, Yvonne, Bob, Nancy, Kimberly, Bob, Patricia, Sarah, Norman, Nancy, Marlene, Mark, Nona, Kyle, Jessica, Bud, Michelle, Elaine, Wanda, Rick, Luke, Jean, Rachel, Doris, Duane, Richard, Elsie, Sandy, Terry, Carlene, Diane, Maddie, Betty, Connie, and those we name now silently or aloud. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We give thanks to the saints of every time and place. By your Spirit, grant us sure confidence in the everlasting glory you promise. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Into your hands, gracious God, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting the power of Christ and the gifts of the Spirit. Amen. The peace of Christ be with you always. Let us share Christ's peace with our brothers and sisters.
return as we make our way back to our seats. Usual reminders here as we prepare for communion. Please fill in the welcome pad near the center aisle with a record of attendance at communion. All baptized Christians are welcome at the Lord's table. And we'll sing our song as we receive our offerings. Me too, obviously. stand as you're able and let us pray. God of life, you give us these gifts of the earth, these resources of our life and our labor. Take them, offered in great thanksgiving, and use them to set a table that will heal the whole creation through Jesus Christ, our Savior and light. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We, we lift up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It, it is, is right, right to give our thanks and praise. praise. It is indeed right, our duty and our joy, that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, through our Savior Jesus Christ, who on this day overcame death and the grave, and by his glorious resurrection opened to us the way of everlasting life. And so with all the choirs of angels, with the church on earth and the hosts of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. God, our bread of life, our table, and our food. You created a world in which all might be satisfied by your abundance. You dined with Abraham and Sarah, promising them life, 
and you have fed your people Israel with manna from heaven. You sent your son to eat with sinners and to become food for the world. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread and gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body. Give it for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is a new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people, for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Remembering, therefore, his life given for us and his rising from the grave, we await his coming again to share with us the everlasting peace. By your spirit, nurture and sustain us with this meal. Strengthen us to serve all in hunger and want. And by this bread and cup, make of us the body of your Son. Through him, all glory and honor is yours, Almighty Father, with the Holy Spirit in your holy church, both now and forever. Amen. Gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, let us pray as Jesus taught us. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Taste and see that the Lord is good. Thanks be to God. Please be seated.
stand as you're able and let us pray. Holy and compassionate God, in bread and wine you give us gifts that form us to be humble and courageous. May your words come to life in our serving and in our witness that we might speak a living voice of healing and justice to all the world. Through Jesus Christ, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. Almighty God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, bless you now and forever. Amen. Amen. Please be seated for the morning's announcements.
make an announcement for Sandy that remind the choir that there's no choir practice next Thursday. Um, and also, I think there's a sign-up sheet in back through December for readers and greeters. And, and uh, I haven't looked at it, but I think there is openings and appreciate if people would look at it and sign it. Thank you. Good morning. Uh, I got this letter in the mail. Uh, yesterday, I believe it was. It's from Gifts. And uh, they're telling us that uh, the end of October and the beginning of November will be spent putting the finishing touches on our new home. And the men are expected to be sleeping here the week of Thanksgiving. Now, that is something to be thankful for. So, they're having an open house and. I can't answer the question right now if it's an open house for everybody or when the date for that one is, but they're having an open house on either Thursday, November 2nd or Sunday, November 5th. I get a little bit more information about that. Uh, didn't have time to look into it, so. I would like to invite you to come to Cargill United Methodist Church Saturday, December 2nd at 7 p.m. or the 3rd at 2 p.m. to hear Handel's Messiah. Um, there will not be a walk in Messiah this year, so if you'd like to come and listen to it, that would be fantastic. Um, they are collecting food for Echo at that performance, so if you can join us, we'd love to see you. Thanks. Will there be some posters that we can stick up somewhere? Yes. For those of us? Okay. Thank you. Good morning. Good morning. I am now a semi-retired teacher. Uh, <laughs> uh, in the flyer this morning, you um, have a brochure, a beautiful brochure that um, the Minute, I think it's Miniman Press, Mr. Duckworth, um, took the design and made a poster back there and the flyer. Um, we are collecting funds for 25 students at Washington Elementary School this year so they can get um, snow pants and snowshoes so they can go out for recess and also be able to walk to school. So there is an envelope, it has our address on it and you can either put money in and give it to me, I'll be standing out there or you can mail it or bring it next time to church. Um, one thing that we did with this project this year which I think is really an awesome thing, it's Thrive and Action Team. And we have this packet and we got seed money of $250. And in this packet, it gives you uh, ideas of how to develop teams that can work for projects. And so the team for this year, and I want to thank them, is my husband Tim, Lori Craig, Joan, Joyce Hornsey, Becky Weber, Marlene Weber, and Donna Thompson. And they're all going to come um, probably some night the beginning of November after we get all the snow boots and pants and put them in bags with all the names of the kids. So I want to really thank them for that. Thanks to the foundation uh, for doing this. And then thank you for giving donations again for, um, for this project. Thank you. Thank you. Watch your slide. Can we advance, Can we advance one, Becky? Becky. 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 Becky, you're having too much fun with kids. <laughs> Could you advance one slide? There it is. There it is. <laughs> Artwork at its best right there. The, um, again, from a, from a, a member this morning, and I thought it was great. Uh, it leads right where we do. The three T's, right? Three, God has given us all the three T's. He's given us the time, the talents, and the treasures. Um, we all have a little bit of all those. And I know how many people think because you don't think you have as many of one as you do the other or, you know what I'm saying. You sit there and do this all day long. Go, what, what, is my, what, do I, what are my three T's? But we all have them. And if you look around, look around the people next to you in the pews, right? Somewhere, somebody has a gift that they've given you, whether it's a smile, whether it's words of wisdom, words of encouragement. Somewhere, somebody's given you a gift. You have gifts. And you've affected everybody in this, in this congregation. So that's important. Um, so when you think about it, God's given us all these things. God wants us to use these things. 
and God wants us to give back the gifts that he gave us to help all of us in this room. So this is our congregation. This is our family. And I'll say that when my dad passed, you know, a month ago, um, um, I got a lot of words of wisdom from people that I didn't think would even say anything to me. And that's family. That's, that's a gift that I thank you all for, um, for doing that. So um, when it comes to next weekend, on the exciting part of this is there's a lot going on. There's Consecration Sunday. We have the youth breakfast. Come support our family's kids. Next week, right after church, go downstairs, have some fellowship. Five bucks. It's cheaper than anywhere else in town come Sunday. Um, but support our family's kids. They have that youth trip coming next year. Um, and it's important. And we haven't sent our kids on these trips in probably over a, a decade. So do what you can. Come support the kids. If there's somebody there struggling, I told, I told the pastor, I'll pay for your ticket. I just come support our kids. They would really, really love to do that. So, um, and then also next week, you know, you've seen, um, you've gotten in the mail the, the, the estimates of giving, right? I'm not sure you've seen that. Next week we give those in church. Take your time to look at that, right? Uh, understand what it means to you. Understand the gifts and the talents that God's given you. And all we're trying to do is help our family. Um, that's what this is all about. This church is really good at doing that, by the way. Um, it really is. So take, take some heart heartfelt time to really look at that, what that means to you. Um, we've been so generous in the past. And next Sunday, um, do what God has in your heart. Thank you. <clears throat> Thank you, Ted. You make my job a lot easier. <laughs> I promise I'll try not to get weepy on you this week. I wrote a few notes down. Um, again, I'd like to repeat what he did. Come to the breakfast. Be part of this family. We'd like to invite all of you, not beg you and keep prodding you to come in and, and use your time and talents and, and, and be contributors. I'd like to thank all the members already who, who contribute to the councils, the planning groups, the choir. Uh, it's, it's that time of the year. Dig down into your hearts and, and see if maybe you could share yourself somehow. Share those gifts. Like I said, each of us are given gifts, and if you don't share them, it doesn't do anybody any good. They're meant to be shared. It's a way of honoring God and doing as Jesus commanded us. It, it looks like we could use a few more choir members, maybe some instrumentalists. Um, my big push this week is we, we have a Narthex remodeling group, a team we've put together, and we, we'd like to make the Narthex a little more friendly. So I'm asking, maybe uh, uh, inviting, if you've got any ideas, uh, contact one of us, contact Pastor. Uh, bring up some ideas, what you'd like to see in the Narthex. It's, it's not to make it more attractive, it's just to make it more comfortable so that we can all gather and, and commune as the family we are. So take your time, look at these time and talents. Maybe somebody will be calling you and uh, I hope to see you at the breakfast also. You can't beat that for five bucks. <laughs> so, all right, thank you. So at our last stewardship meeting, Pastor Bond asked us to say a prayer. So Ted said, well, he started out and he said, I hate buttermilk. And then I said, well, I don't really like flour either. And Pastor Bond's trying to figure out what's going on. And Ron said, I don't like cinnamon either, but I sure like sweet rolls. <laughs> so the youth is selling sweet rolls, right? And that's where Carson comes in. You going to come in and say something? <laughs> well, as he said, um, we're selling cinnamon rolls today. So, um... Yay. <laughs> <laughs> Echo Community Meal also 
next Saturday, right? Next Saturday, uh, the sign-up sheet for helpers is here. A thank you to all those who took casserole, is that we're calling it? casserole trays, uh, that will come in on Saturday. But uh, we do need some helpers. Uh, there are short shifts, so if you can only come for a little while, just sign up for a short shift. If you can come for the whole day, put your name all the way across. We hope you'll look at that. I'll put it near the cinnamon rolls because I know everyone's going to be going to cinnamon rolls. So we'll put it over there somewhere nearby. If we get a little sticky out there, it's okay. So. Um, I think that's all for announcements, unless there are other things that you want to bring to our attention. We're red next Sunday. Beg red? Yes, we're red. The 500th anniversary of the Reformation, we'll be commemorating that. And we don't have a lot of color in our sanctuary, which is, which is okay. It's a beautiful place. But sometimes we want a, a splash or a flash of color. Red next week. So we're going to decorate the church, which sits in the pews. Uh, find something red to wear for Reformation Day, whether it's just a, a single red scarf or all your badger gear. I mean, badger gear is okay. So... I invite you to stand for our setting song. peace, sound the good news. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God.